That is a poison that can hurt your children. You can't see it or smell it, but it can be found in many places. So how do you know if your child has been in contact with lead? Answer these questions. Has your family or your child ever lived outside of the United States? Or have you recently arrived from a foreign country? Does your family live in or does your child regularly spend time in an older house or building with peeling or chipping paint? Has this building recently been repaired or are repairs being planned? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then your child already may be at risk for lead poisoning and should be tested for lead. So what is this poison called lead? Lead is a metal found in the earth. In the past, lead was added to gasoline, paint, plumbing, and many other everyday things. Lead is no longer used in gas in the United States, but in other countries it is still used. Unfortunately, lead may also be in some brand new products. As these things are used or get worn out, the lead contained in them can spread into house dust, air, water, food, and even the soil. Lead gets inside the human body through eating or drinking or even breathing, and when it does, Lead acts as a poison. Children under six years old are the most likely to be lead poisoned because they put so many things in their mouth. And lead is more harmful to children than adults because it can affect a young child's nerves and brain while they're still growing. Lead poisoning can happen quickly or lead can build up slowly over time without warning. Lead can harm both young children and adults. In young children, it can affect their behavior and ability to learn and even limit a young child's growth. In adults, lead can hurt the brain, kidneys, and nervous system. And at very high levels in children and adults, lead can cause permanent brain damage and even death. The problem is lead is a silent poison. Children or adults may not show any sign of lead poisoning. That means many people that are lead poisoned do not look or act sick. The only way to know for sure if you or your child has lead poisoning is a blood test, and I'll talk about that easy process next. But some children who are lead poisoned may have an upset stomach, trouble eating or sleeping, headache, trouble concentrating or paying attention, irritability. As I said, the only way to know if your child or you are lead poisoned is through a blood lead level test. In a blood lead level test, a tiny blood sample is taken from the finger or arm with a small needle. The test measures how much lead is in the blood. There is no safe level of lead, so the lower the lead test result, the better. The blood test is so quick, it doesn't harm my child. Ask your doctor, resettlement worker, or local health department to find out where you can get this test. Because blood lead level tests are the only way to be sure, New York State has requirements about when children should be tested. I asked the New York State Department of Health Health Program Administrator to explain the requirements. Hi, I'm Ann Whitfield Green, Health Program Administrator with New York State Department of Health Lead Poisoning Prevention Program. Because lead poisoning is so dangerous and yet so preventable, New York State requires that children have a blood lead test at age one and again at age two. Up until age six, at your child's yearly checkup, the doctor should ask you several questions to see if your child could be at risk for lead poisoning. If there's a chance your child has been in contact with lead, your child should get a blood lead test. And additionally, if you are a newly arrived refugee and if your child is six months to 16 years old and has recently arrived in this country, the government recommends a blood lead test at first entry to the United States. The government also recommends refugee children up to the age of six be retested again in three to six months to be sure that they are not being exposed to lead in their new environment. Older refugee children should also be tested again if there has been a risk of their coming into contact with lead. Thanks, Anne. As I said before, 
You can't see or smell lead, so it's important to learn where lead is found and how to avoid it. In New York State's cities, most homes and apartments were built before 1978. Before 1978, lead was added to paint, but it was forbidden after 1978. However, most houses built before 1978 still have old lead paint, often under newer paint. If the paint peels, cracks, or is worn down, the chips and dust from the old lead paint can spread onto floors, window sills, and all around the house. Most lead poisoning in children occurs when they swallow or breathe in dust from old lead paint. Old lead paint dust gets onto children's hands and toys and into their bodies because young children put so many things in their mouth. We wet wipe to reduce lead dust. If you have a choice, it's best not to live in a home that has peeling or chipping paint, especially if your family includes babies, young children, or someone who is pregnant. Older homes should be tested for lead. If you rent or own your own home, contact your local health department to learn more about how your home can be inspected for lead hazards. If you rent your home, landlords must fix peeling or damaged paint if lead is found. This work must be done safely, or dust from the repairs could poison your family. If you rent your home, repairs should first be approved by the owner, even if you are properly trained. As a renter, you may not have the authority to make repairs. Children and pregnant women should stay away from home repairs until the areas have been carefully cleaned and cleared of lead hazards. Before any work is started on your home, call your local health department about how the work should be done safely. The Department of Health gave me lots of good information. Soil may also be poisoned from deposits of lead paint, or soil near highways may have high levels of lead from leaded gasoline car exhaust and other sources. Children who play in the soil or come into contact with soil that is tracked into the home may become lead poisoned. Since dust and soil can often carry lead, one of the most effective ways to reduce exposure to poison is to be sure to clean your home at least once a week. Do not use a broom to clean up dust or peeling lead paint. This can spread more dust into the air. It's safer to wet wipe or damp mop often to clean solid surfaces. Do not damp mop carpeting. Carpeting and rugs can trap dust and soil. Be sure to use a HEPA filtered vacuum. A HEPA filter traps tiny pieces of lead dust and helps stop lead dust from getting into the air. Vacuums without a HEPA filter can spread dust into the air. If you do not have a HEPA filtered vacuum, contact your local health department to learn more about them and how to find one. Be sure to clean in and around windows, doorways, floors, and children's play areas where dust enters. Another simple method to reduce exposure to lead dust and soil is to wash often. Everyone in your family should wash hands often with soap and water, especially before eating and sleeping. Also, wash children's toys, bottles, and pacifiers with soap and water. Throw out old painted toys if you do not know if the paint contains lead. Some jobs and hobbies can involve contact with lead. These include painting, plumbing, construction, electrical, car repair, or working with firearms, stained glass, or pottery. If a family member works with lead, or at a job that exposes them to lead, they should change clothes and shower at the work site before they come home. They should use a doormat to wipe feet and take shoes off before coming inside. Both of these steps helps keep dirt and dust that may contain lead out of your home. Finally, if they haven't showered at work, they should shower before playing with children and wash their work clothes separately from the rest of the household laundry. I wash work clothes separately from the rest of my family's clothes. In addition to soil and dust, tap water might also become contaminated when it comes into contact with lead. This may happen if it flows through old lead pipes or brass fixtures. Boiling water does not remove lead from water. 
The best way to reduce exposure to lead in water is by flushing water lines that have not been in use in the past few hours. This means to run the tap until the water is cold to the touch before using it for drinking or cooking. And always use only cold water for cooking and drinking. We let the cold water run before we use it. Food may also become contaminated by lead in many ways. If food comes into contact with lead-glazed ceramic dishes, food from the sod or on imported cans of food also may contain lead. Lead has also been found in inks used in some Mexican candy wrappers and in some tamarind candies sold in clay pots. Even subspices, such as imported turmeric, can contain lead. It is best to avoid using these dishes or containers. If you have any questions about the spices or food in your home, contact your local health department. Be sure to feed your children foods that will strengthen your child's body and help fight against lead poisoning. Give your child foods that are high in calcium, iron, and vitamin C. These are foods that help keep lead from being stored in your child's body. Foods with calcium include milk, cheese, yogurt, tofu, and green leafy vegetables. Foods with iron include beans, lean meat, and fortified cereal. Foods with vitamin C include oranges, orange juice, grapefruit, tomatoes, and green peppers. Feed your children four to six small meals a day. Children with full stomachs take in less lead. We eat many healthy snacks in every day, and they are good for us. There are other products not made in the United States that may contain lead, such as some Ayurvedic and other traditional medicines and some home remedies some imported metal jewelry, and some cosmetics, even some imported toys. Throughout this video, we've mentioned that if you have any questions about lead, to ask your local health department. Remember, it only takes a small amount of lead to poison a child. Lead poisoning is one of the most common preventable health problems for young children. It's preventable because we know what causes it and there is enough available information about how to reduce exposure to lead. These are the ways that we talked about to lower your exposure to lead. Make sure that your children and you get blood tested for lead. Talk with your child's doctor or nurse or call your local health department listed in the phone book blue pages. In New York City and Rochester, dial 311. Talk to your resettlement worker about finding lead-safe housing for your family. Use simple house-cleaning methods to help keep lead dust levels down. And serve healthy foods and many small healthy snacks throughout the day to keep young bodies from absorbing lead. For more information, please visit the New York State Department of Health website at www.nyhealth.gov forward slash environmental forward slash lead. Remember, your children will grow up healthier if you reduce their exposure to lead.